Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. I'm not sure what had to happen for me to get to this point. As I make this video, right now I feel regrets pouring over me. It's just so many regrets. Anyways, we might as well get this over with. Our casual sliver deck tech is actually... It's, it's pretty fun. Crap. There are a ton of directions you can go in with a slivers deck, although why you would want to play one at all is beyond me. We decided to make a toolbox deck. This means that we've designed the deck to have a lot of different answers for a lot of different strategies. We'll start with our playsets. Four Gale Rider Sliver and Striking Sliver are pretty important. Both Flying and First Strike give you a significant advantage in combat. These are both great for any kind of casual Sliver deck. The next few playsets are basically Anthem effects. Muscle Sliver, Predatory Sliver, and Sinew Sliver all give your slivers plus one plus one. Again, this is extremely important in most casual sliver strategies. The last place that we're running is of Crystalline Sliver. Printed all the way back in Stronghold, this is still arguably one of the best, if not the best sliver to ever be printed. Two mana, two two, all your slivers get Shroud. There's no reason not to run a place out of this. It was so popular it got its own FNM promo version. You need the Crystalline Sliver to survive any type of targeted removal. Since you won't be targeting your own slivers very much, the upside is just way too good to ignore. Enjoy being annoying and not having a soul. Now that our playsets are done with, we move on to slivers with very specific uses. Three Mana Weft Sliver earn their spot thanks to their Birds of Paradise-like ability. It'll help your ramp, it'll help you get the right colors, and Mana Weft just adds more consistency to a deck that is essentially five colors, and I'll be honest, we need all the mana fixing help we can get. Our first real specialty sliver is Hibernation Sliver. We run a pair of them. Being able to return a sliver to your hand for two life is valuable. If you're trying to avoid a board wipe or you don't have Crystalline out to protect you from removal, Hibernation could win you games. The cost of two life to an aggro deck isn't usually that big of a deal, especially when it's saving your best creatures. Hibernation is what you want against control type decks. It's extremely useful. After all that, we're left with three one of slivers. The first is Harmonic Sliver. This card is so good it's used outside of sliver decks in constructed formats. Being able to destroy an artifact or enchantment on entry to the battlefield is powerful. It's definitely something that we're going to need. No reason not to run one. The same could be said for Dark Heart Sliver. You're going to come up against other aggressive strategies or possibly burn decks. If this happens, Dark Heart will probably save your life multiple times. Sacking a creature isn't your favorite thing to do, but getting three life each time, you should be able to run them out of gas before they can kill you. Dark Heart is great for situations like that. You need to do whatever you can to stay alive. Dark Heart helps you. Just use it. The last one of in the deck actually isn't a sliver. Dauntless Escort is a three mana answer to board sweeps. You sack it, all your slivers gain indestructible this turn, it's basically broken. Why did we use this instead of Sliver Hive Lord? Because this is way easier to cast the vast majority of the time. We're trying to be a super fast deck that never takes its foot off the pedal. There are situations where the Hive Lord would be dead in your hand, you don't want that. The Escort has a great ability and is a 3-3 to boot for just 3 mana, it just makes sense. So we have all these toolbox cards, how are we going to get them if they aren't in our hand when we want them? Well, we're running a pair of Court of Calling, one of the best creature tutors out there. Thanks to the fact that it's instant speed and has Convoke, this will be very useful for grabbing our one or two ofs. Whether it's a Dark Heart against Burn, Dauntless Escort against Sweepers, Harmonic against a Pesky Artifact, or a Crystalline against Mass Kill spells, Court of Calling lets us get all of those. In all honesty, there's justification to go up to 3 on this card, that's how good it is. With the cord in your deck, it'll basically be like you have 3 copies of whichever one of you need, and that's pretty important. The only other non-land cards in the deck are artifacts. We're running a playset of Aether Vial because that card is broken and getting free sliver sounds like a lot of fun. Just take this up to 2 mana and play an extra sliver per turn, not worrying about it being countered or anything. Just a great utility artifact. The last one of in the deck is Coat of Arms. You play this, your sliver should be bigger than anything else on the board. Getting plus one plus one for each other sliver? Come on, that's so gross. Stack that with a couple muscle slivers and you're looking at 10 tens in no time at all. Our land base is both ugly and expensive, but hang in there, we have options. For the optimal build, we run four Ancient Ziggurat, four Cavern of Souls, four Gemstone Mine, and four Sliver Hive. These all make it way easier to cast our five colors and get slivers into play safer. The only other lands are four Mutavault and one Forest. The Mutavault is a sliver itself, so there's no reason not to run it. 
The forest is there simply because we just need more green mana than any other color most of the time. After working with this deck a lot, it's outrageously fun. Just, I still hate saying that. Anyways, it's real explosive. I've dealt 15 plus damage on turn 4 without a real issue at all. All your slivers are relevant. Your lands, while seemingly clunky, are actually quite efficient. You shouldn't have too many problems casting whatever you want. Plus, once you have 5 creatures out by turn 3 or 4, courting for whatever you need to be pretty easy. Just saying, turn 1 Gale Rider, turn 2 Mana Weft, turn 3 Double plus 1 plus 1 Slivers, turn 4 Activate Immutable, bam, that's 16 damage. That start isn't that hard to pull off. There are a lot of different lines of play that lead to a ton of damage that early. Gotta say, the deck turned out to be way more insane than I thought. I might actually, you know, keep the deck. Oh, jeez. Oh, I don't feel good. Okay, so you love the deck and have therefore given up your humanity, but it's too expensive. No worries, your lands are tough. We suggest replacing some of the more expensive ones with Forbidden Orchards and Reflecting Pools. The deck won't be as consistent, but these lands are just fine, and let's be honest, you're not exactly worried about 1-1 one -one spirits ruining your day. Forbidden Orchard is perfectly fine. If you don't care about your life at all, just run City of Brass. It's an easy answer to tough questions. If you're missing a few slivers, the next one we thought to add was Hard Sliver. Giving all your slivers haste is pretty cool, but it just wasn't as useful as what we put in the deck. If you don't want to run the toolbox of 1 and 2 ofs, Hard Sliver is a great 4 of and adds to your explosiveness. The last substitution we would make is for Aether Vial. There is no card that replaces the work that Vial does, but Skull Clamp is arguably more broken than the Vial. In a deck where you're playing all your stuff all the time, card advantage can be nice. Skull Clamp either immediately kills your creature for card advantage, or pumps up their power and you get cards when they die. Skull Clamp is great. Listen, you're already playing the most evil deck in the world, might as well add the most evil equipment ever made. It's like, it's a perfect match. And Skull Clamp just got reprinted in Commander 2014, so it should be pretty easy to get. Yeah, well, we're done with that. I hope you enjoyed our, our Sliver deck tech. Woo, I really need to go take a shower or, or two. Anyways, if you have any other suggestions for Sliver players, leave them below, I guess. Whatever, y'all made me do this. I hope you're happy. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.